Antarctica, the world's southernmost continent, has witnessed an utterly remarkable recent discovery. Thousands of lifeless birds and an astonishing black lake that defies freezing were found amidst the vast icy expanse. Now the researchers think that the discovery can give us new answers to the climate puzzle and perhaps also change the history books. What could they possibly have discovered beneath the ancient continent? In January 2023, a group of climate journalists embark on a work expedition to Queen Maud's land. While they are there to work on other matters, they hear murmurs of a mystery, which captures their attention. These journalists had been to the southern continent many times before. But this was new. This was something they had never heard before. So they decide to go and investigate for themselves. They travel across the endless landscape of ice and rocky mountains. And when they arrive, they observe a landscape which can only be compared to a satellite dish. Surrounded by two towering mountains and a wall of ice. And in the middle, they see a black pond. After a quick lunch break in front of the scenic view, they start making their way towards the pond. As they walk closer and closer, they are met with a rotten and almost unbearable stench. When they arrive at the pond, they notice how dark the water is and the surface is covered in a membrane of something. Then they look at the mountainsides and notice a strange brown coloration. As they walk up the sides to investigate, they slowly start seeing the contour of a dead bird. Walking further, they see a beak, then bones, then another beak, and on and on. They realize the brown coloration they had seen earlier was thousands and thousands of dead birds littered throughout the valley. Although interesting, most of the people on the trip paid it little mind. They were on Antarctica to report on other things. Except for the Norwegian Eivind Molder. He wanted to get to the bottom of this. He wanted to know why so many birds came to this specific location. And why they died. And was it somehow connected to the strange Black Pond? But just as he returned from the valley, his time on the frozen continent was over, and it was time to leave. But as he is leaving Antarctica, he finds out that an English biologist has been in the area just a year before him. That Englishman was the University of Glasgow postdoc graduate Ewan Wakefield. And as soon as Avind returned home, he contacted the English biologist. It turns out that Wakefield has been to the area several times before, and he has even named the area the Valley of Death and he has taken some of the dead birds back to the UK to research them closer at home. What Wakefield tells Avind is that they have taken samples of both the birds and the oily pond. And it turns out that the dead birds were a species called the Antarctic petrel, a common species in the Antarctic. And also that the field of dead birds covered a huge area of around three to four square miles. Wakefield had also discovered something strange around the time aspect. Utilizing a technique known as carbon dating, capable of determining the age of organic matter, Wakefield made a remarkable revelation. The birds dated back a staggering 53,000 years. But 53,000 years ago, the Earth is supposed to have been in an ice age. Antarctica should have been covered in more than a two-mile thick ice sheet. But Wakefield's discovery shows that there were birds there and that they likely returned to the valley annually to lay eggs and raise their chicks. In the coldest and most hostile place on Earth, at the height of an ice age. So there is good reason to believe that there was no ice in this area and that the climate was warmer than previously thought. But what about the black oily pond? These birds are very fat to protect them from the Antarctic cold. And as layer over layer of these birds have died in the valley, their fat has seeped through the ground so much that it has started to pool up on the surface. The enigma surrounding the birds in Antarctica has been partly unraveled, yet extensive research remains. These intriguing scientific findings raise pertinent questions about the implications for climate research. <laughs>